Cloud chasing. Urban Dictionary defines it as a person that only hangs with certain people or starts beef with people to gain popularity. So the general vibe of the term clout chasing is a negative one. You will often see it in the comments of diss tracks, commentary videos or any other type of video that has somebody else's name in the title. Do we know anybody that fits that description? Hmm. <laughs> but I'd like I'd like to challenge that perspective for a second. And I'm going to use the recent beef between Dax and KSI as a case study for how to properly be a quote-unquote clout chaser. For anybody who doesn't know, Dax is a rapper currently sitting on 1.2 million subscribers on YouTube, and he's blown up in the past year, particularly during the whole Deji versus KSI beef. Speak on my name, that's a YouTube Dax. I'm a mainstream nigga, not a YouTube rapper. I was in a trap trying to get my rest when I heard you was talking. I was like that. Bless got a couple million views off the shit. No stress, waste time on a pussy ass nigga. Say less. Who's that with me? But while many are calling out Dax for being a clout chaser, studying his moves in the past six months reveals tactics that we can all learn from. The first thing you notice about him is that he's legitimately a good rapper. How y'all let a dog get this rich? Cop a chain with some bags and a dripped outfit. Man, how y'all let this dog get this rich? Man, most rappers in the game don't even live like this. Dude. Even KSI himself gives props to Dax for his rapping skills in one of his recent videos. I have to admit, Dax has been doing his thing lately. Freestyle after freestyle. And your verses in all these tracks we're pretty sick. KSI doesn't seem the type of guy to waste his time on anybody calling him out. So what this proves is that if you're going to be a clout chaser, you have to make sure that the foundation you're running on is solid. You need to be very good at what you're doing before going up there and claiming the spotlight. And if you've got the skills to back it up, the sky is the limit. What I think sets Dax apart from other people in his position is his audacity to not only dream big, but also take any route that's gonna lead him to achieving his desired goal. If you're familiar with Gary V, who is the embodiment of ambition and hard work, one of the concepts he often talks about is hacking culture. And all you're doing is reacting to culture? Like, I don't care if the Migos is shit or bad or good, if Danny Glover, if Childish Gambino is good, bad or different. I just care that people care. Like, what people love is relevance. Like, just culture, right? Like, game seven of the NBA Finals, like, you slip a little, like, nobody can beat you to the market. You're just dropping shit that everybody gives a fuck about. Something pops on fucking Instagram and everyone's talking about, just one little line, that's what hooks people. Right. That's what hooks it, you know? There's a large overlap between Gary Vee's culture hacking theory and what's commonly referred to as cloud chasing. You can be good at what you're doing, you can be a great singer, a great rapper, animator, whatever it is that you're doing. But talent and practical skill is never enough. You also need to be smart about the moves you're making in order to get your work seen by people. Think of culture as an ocean with waves of trends constantly forming, getting bigger and bigger and then finally dying out and then new trends always come and go but the ocean of culture is on a permanent loop and you need to study this cycle and learn how to navigate these waves to get the attention that's gonna boost you towards your desired destination. In a practical example of hacking culture, Dax saw that making diss track after diss track was getting him noticed so he used that momentum to get attention on his original tracks and so he went from being a janitor to now touring across the US. And if you listen to him talk about his journey Journey, he comes across as very calculated, very aware of every step that he's taking. I have two options as a music artist. I can either dream and wait on some of these huge artists to maybe co-sign me and then like be put on, or, or I can just do out. whatever the fuck I want. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, let me find my route to get more attention and I'll just bank on that I have enough talent to when people come to what they see, they'll fuck with it. Mm. What he's talking about here is very important. You need to be good enough for people to stick with you because anybody can make a noise and turn heads. But unless you're worthy of holding people's attention, they're just gonna go right back to their regular lives and forget about you. And so we get to the boiling point of this beef where Dax just called out KSI to a boxing match. Cause you, you just, you silly bro, you, you silly, you, you, you a meme, a character. As soon as I destroy you in this one song, G, we getting in the motherfucking ring and I'ma knock your bitch ass out. And this is where things get really interesting because you know KSI is not gonna back down. Fam, 
Do you, do you know who you're talking to? Right, different levels, Dax. The sooner you realize that, the better. KSI seems to be really pissed off that Dax dared to challenge him to a boxing match while he still holds the YouTube Boxing Championship belt. So much so that he accepted to pay for Dax's flight and hotel expenses. I've got your first class flight ready to be booked. LA to London, direct flight. I've got the hotel ready and best believe I've got Addison Lee exec with your name on it, waiting for your sideshow bob looking ass. And to be honest, at this point, I was sure he was gonna just back down, but nope, he came back with this. Deal, got a shows this week, back home in Canada, and dates lined up. Week before tour is clear. We'll start boxing classes next week. Give me a few weeks to train, and it's six rounds, three minutes before I leave for tour with Tech 9 on April 11th. Did you catch that? Do you see what Dax is doing here? In his mind, he's playing KSI like a ukulele. Now, on the other hand, KSI is very much aware of this, and he's not backing down either. So we're at this interesting stalemate where Dax is like, I'm gonna fight you, and in the process, I'm gonna get a lot of eyes on my music. And KSI is like, go ahead, plug your little tour as much as you want. I'm even gonna pay all of your expenses just so I can humiliate you in front of everybody. Now, to be perfectly clear, I don't think Dax can beat KSI. At least not at this point without any training. And he's got himself in a pretty difficult situation. Is he going to fly out to London and get his face smashed by KSI? Is he gonna stretch this out long enough to have time to train for a proper boxing match? Or is he gonna conveniently weasel his way out somehow? Who knows, I certainly don't. But one thing is certain, there haven't been a lot of people showing as much bravado as Dax has in the previous months. So far he's been playing a brilliant game on YouTube that I think he deserves props for. But has he bitten a little more than he can chew this time? We're gonna have to wait and find out. But regardless how this wraps up. I think Dax's view on clout chasing is something we should all give a second thought to. This this is what I this is what I, I'm gonna say this show on the show right fans now. Fans are fans. Clout, this, this 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 term clout chaser is like killing kids dreams. Mm. Like a clout all a clout chaser is is someone who is going to do anything and everything to make their dream happen. And when I was trying to get a Division 1 basketball scholarship, I dove on every loose ball. Mm. Does that make me a clout chaser? No. I got a family to feed. Mm -hmm. I got to retire my parents. So don't be scared of this word word clout chaser. Do what you got to do to get what you got to get. As long as you've got an honest mission and you're not driven by a selfish motivation to drag others down on your way up, this clout chasing or culture hacking as Gary Vee calls it, or whatever it is that you want to call it, is nothing more than a smart marketing tactic, especially when it's done well. So from now on you can call Wilfer and I the clout boys with a Z. <laughs> What's that? It sounds too much like Rice Gum's clout gang? <laughs> well, fuck Rice Gum and his clout gang. The clout boys are superior to the clout gang, okay? It's a very exclusive club. And by the way, we're taking applications. If you want to join the clout boys, go to my Instagram right now and comment hashtag clout boys on my last post. I'm going to pick three random people and I will animate their inauguration into the clout boys club in the next video. It's the easiest contest in the world. This is my Instagram handle right here, leave a comment on my last post, and you might make a cameo in my next video. I'm just saying. In the meantime, stay cloudy. <laughs> That's our new outro. We talked about this, Will. <laughs> what do you mean it's dumb? It's not dumb. You're dumb. Watch my highlight reel, 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 for this life to